Hi, welcome to our presentation for the Chaos Diversity and Inclusion Badging Program. With me on this project are Matt G. Actually, I'm Matt S. Um, and then there's also Sala, my co-mentor, and Asta and Tola, who are my, uh, me and Sala's mentees on this project. Um, so you may be asking, how does the diversity and inclusion badging program come about? So um, there are two big components to this. Um, the first one is the diversity and inclusion part of it. Um, so we have an organization called Chaos, or Community Health Analytics Open Source Software, that we have put together uh, at the University of Nebraska Omaha, and now it's spread to a lot of other places. That diversity and inclusion aspect is um, one of the working groups, other working groups being things like risk or evolution. Uh, and that diversity and inclusion um, is, is something that's kind of hard to visualize. While you can have a risk metric in, uh, in, a, in a kind of built out way, uh, you can put evolution metrics in software and make graphs about them. Diversity and inclusion is not as easy to put into uh, action. And that is uh, a very important part of why we wanted to build this, um, this badging program for diversity and inclusion, so that we could have some way that we could foster community health in the open source domain. The software badging section of the DNI badging is because we had a lot of inspiration from um, groups like the Journal of Open Source Software or the Core Infrastructure Initiative Best Practices Program, which is also a badging program. And these were very helpful in getting us off the ground. Uh, th their documentation was very stellar. So let's talk about how we did get it off the ground. Uh, oh, yeah. So shaping the concept was um, one of the one of the more difficult parts. We started with a repository that I created on my GitHub account, and it was just for documentation in the early stages of our work. It was a lot of writing. Uh, we rewrote most of what we wrote in the first place, and as you can see, we have a mind map that one of our mentees, Asta, had made for us. This is too much detail to show in one slide, but it was an example of how quickly this um, this got to be very complicated. And our goal was still the same as it was before, to foster healthy DNI practices in the open source community. Let me talk a little bit about how this program, um, this application submission, all that kind of stuff works. So, let me talk about how we initially put that workflow together. Uh, so chaos has a series of metrics that you can use to measure the health of an open source project. That Those metrics are very useful in measuring, but they don't provide any any uh, ob uh, objective reasoning of this is where the green is, this is where the yellow is, this is where the red is. Um, so it's really up to your interpretation on how to measure those. That's why in the badging program, we we d really didn't decide to put that together in, uh, in a way that we ask what their measurements are or judge how they measure things. Our question is to ask is really, are these things measured? And um, how are you working on them? Uh, like, are you doing, are you committing yourself to this, the measurement and the, um, the conformance of these metrics. So the initial idea was that both projects and events can apply. So a project uh, would have to be open source. Um, this was actually not a recommendation at this time. Uh, it was just any project or event. Um, and I'll talk about the refinement later, but you would submit an issue on our repository um, to ask for a software badge. Uh, as you can see on the right, on the picture on the right, uh, this is our initial table for the different types of software badges and the requirements that you would have to meet. These requirements were the metrics. Um, so if you followed 
if you kind of like followed and measured uh, at least three metrics out of the five that we had presented, uh, we actually would um, we would put together a passing badge for you, put you on the list of passing projects, and you would have that badge to display wherever you wanted to. The review system at this point was still under construction. Oh. So uh, to find a place to host this information, we claimed the badging organization on GitHub. We actually um, we actually ended up getting the, the organization slash badging. And the repositories, um, I'm going to highlight the three numbers, two through four. Um, I'm going to talk about these ones. So diversity and inclusion was our main repository for diversity and inclusion badging. Um, under the badging organization, this repository was to provide documentation and information on um, how to apply for a badge, how the badging program works, kind of the things I'm giving you in this presentation. So there are also some repositories project and event diversity and inclusion. And these were useful in the submission process. This is where the actual workflow of the diversity and inclusion badging program occurs. Uh, so this, these, are the, these are the important repositories right now because that's where a lot of the work is happening. And we also, I also want to mention that we got this far um, on our own, Saul and I, and then once we got our Google Summer of Code and Outreach internships approved and we got those started, the project just exploded. Um, it's been going a lot like faster. The process has been since then. Uh, let me talk about those mentorships. Um, so we have Asta with Google Summer of Code, uh, and she is working on specifically the workflow work workflow process for the diversity and inclusion badging. Uh, these are the official names for the mentorships, by the way. So that workflow process is um, is moved forward a lot more now. I'll get to that in just a moment. And Tola is working with Outreachy and working with us. And he is developing a framework for internationalization, which um, starts in the DNI badging program and kind of expand. We're planning to expand it out to the rest of Chaos as an organization. Um, they've really pushed us forward in good ways, and um, we have plenty of time left with them. Uh, and I just want to mention how much I appreciate Asta and Tola for their work with our organization. I really mean it. Like that, you guys have been great. Let me talk more about uh, Asta's work first. Um, so, the revised workflow, uh, the current version that we have now, is that most projects and events can apply. Like I had mentioned before, we narrowed it down to that um, that that we need like a code of conduct to work with. They need to be an open source project, um, just some basic requirements. But it's pretty similar there. Instead of an issue, we have a pull request system where they answer questions um, in a document about. Uh, this is a good time to mention also that all of our workflow happens on GitHub right now. Uh, while we have some Google Docs, some HackMD, but a lot of that workflow is, um, and especially the submission and review process, are going to be on GitHub completely. Um, so that that's kind of like if someone submits a pull request and they want to get a badge, they answer a series of questions with the template. And that template is going to provide uh, provide them with the questions that like uh, do you how, do you present family friendliness at your event uh, and are you committed to it or um, do you measure speaker demographics for events for example um, so that those badge statuses haven't changed much they're at um, pending passing silver and gold as was before. But we also have the under review state, which is used for when a project is um, being reviewed by 
um, the 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 reviewers of the pro like the reviewers of the project or event, and we want them to um, know that their badge is being worked on, and that review system um, with us is really taking shape. It's really getting um getting to, like moving forward really fast. So um, the other one is for Tola's internationalization project, which I haven't talked much about yet. Um, so this is for Markdown-based translation that we eventually want to move to all of chaos. We've considered many platforms, um, mostly crowdsourced platforms for uh, translation, internationalization. Uh, we ended up choosing Weblate, um, specifically because Weblate has an open source toolkit available and they have worked with Chaos, uh, a Chaos project before. Uh, they've worked with Grimoire Lab, which is a evolution metrics visualization. Uh, it's kind of gotten pretty big. Um, so building with Docker was kind of related to that open source toolkit. Uh, we built this with Docker. Toa was able to get it working before we did. And, um, that develop and, and we did a developer installation too. Uh, in which we got an instance of Weblate running for crowdsource translation. Uh, and we have more to report on that in the future. Uh, it's, it's a work in progress right now, but it looks like we've gotten a lot done so far. Um, so to um, make some remarks about the future of the project, we are having our mentees come around until August, um, at which point we really hope they stick around. <laughs> and we are also working on improving chaos metrics as we're working with, um, with chaos on the project. So we have this set of metrics that I mentioned before, but we have this set of chaos metrics that we follow and we work with. Um, and if, as you look, as you work with certain documentation, you know, you'll find, um, you'll find a kink in the hose every once in a while. So we have been improving the chaos metrics as we go, especially for event and project diversity and inclusion. And we're hoping to be accepting submissions for this badging program by, um, by the end of the summer, which is really exciting. Um, we've made a lot of um, moving forward to get that done. And I believe um, we will be making an impact in the future. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what impact we make. Um, we are hoping to get a slot for Google Season of Docs, uh, and we're waiting on that, but um, we are really excited to see if we uh, are able to improve our documentation with that. Uh, otherwise, uh, we have people that are always willing to do it too. Um, and using the organization to, so this is an interesting point. We have a lot of potential for other badges that we could also run through chaos. Um, we have, we have software badges for things like risk or value or, um, evolution or even common metrics that we can make sure that we, that people know that these are important things to follow. Um, and using this organization badging for more badges is something that we want to plan on in the future. Um, that's what I have for today. I want to thank all of you um, from everyone in the team, Matt G, Sala, Asta, Tola, and myself. Um, and thank you for viewing our presentation. I, oh, I apologize. I am so sorry. Uh, hi, Georg. Uh, and Jason says thank you and uh, appreciate your appreciation of the project.
and um, thank you for letting us know you couldn't hear anything. Um, so I am willing to take any questions about the project um, and answer any questions you, you may have. And to provide any insight on the project that you um, have questions about, I guess it's all the same thing. But please feel free to give recommendations or insight as well on the project. If I can, I can talk about it for a little bit as well, too, if you'd like. Um, so we have, oh, can, can people still hear me? Just to make sure that you can still hear me. I'm getting, I got uh, another, okay, just to make sure. Um, so our project kind of grew out of like the beginning of this year. And I'm just so happy um, to see that it's gotten so big since then. Um, it's it's we've got so much, um, so much, so many people interested in being part of the project is really what I what I see. Um, and we're in the process right now since the presentation. We've been in the process of working on uh, um, getting reviewers um, to test out the process, and we're always interested in having more of those. Um, so and. Someone, someone else said, thank you for a good presentation. Thank you so much. Matt, if someone did want to participate as a reviewer, how would they do that? Yes, that's a good question. Uh, so I think our e my email is listed on this account. Or um, I have also have a GitHub page that you can go to. Um, it's under github.com slash badging. And if you want to participate on any of that, um, any of the badging process, feel free to drop an issue on any of the repositories. Our preferred is Meta, um, M-E-T-A, but um, that and also sending an email works as well. Um, whichever one is most preferable. I don't know if I can send a message to everybody here, but. Okay, so I am um, going to leave my email. Someone asked about participating, so I'm going to leave my email as an answer to that question. Um, and then we have another question from Georg, who says, can you maybe elaborate on the overall chaos mission and how badging fits in? Okay. Um, do you want to talk about that one, Elizabeth, or would you like me to talk sure. about it? Sure. In case also, hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth. I'm not Matt G. <laughs> I'm Elizabeth. Um, Matt G couldn't be here today, so I'm just filling in. And I'm relatively new to the Chaos Project um, as the community manager, so hi. It's great to see you all. Um, I have a, a long history of open source, so I'm very excited to be part of this project. So Chaos, what Chaos aims to do is provide metrics so that you can measure and track your overall community health in open source. And that's really the main goal. And there are um, different sections of that. So for instance, um, DNI is just one of those areas that we look at. Um, and we do have a whole working group that works on uh, developing metrics, peer reviewed metrics, um, to answer some questions about diversity and inclusion in, in open source projects. So the badging part of this kind of takes that a step further and lets people uh, really show that they that these are something these metrics are things that are important to them and things that they're working on and thinking about and actively um, measuring and tracking and so uh, uh, Matt said earlier that we might expand that into other areas so the other areas being uh, things like evolution so you know how is the project growing is it growing well are we you know are we active are we healthy? Um, things like that. So, um, so that's kind of how this badging program fits in. And it is for events and projects as well. There are some separate issues. Um, some of it overlaps, but uh, there are separate kind of issues. For instance, like in events, as, as Matt mentioned before, we would look at things like event uh, speaker attendance, like how, how diverse are your, your speakers? How diverse are your attendees? Um, 
are, it, it, like he mentioned before too, is it family friendly? So do you have things like a nursing area? Now, granted, things are different with COVID. So um, that's kind of thrown a, a, a little wrench in the overall plans that we, we had before. But um, we ca we're we talking about how we would apply some of these metrics to virtual events, for instance, like this one. So um, these are all ongoing conversations. And again, it's, it's pretty new in the process. So we would really appreciate participation from whoever is interested in this stuff and wants to be a part of it and help us grow and, and evolve this this badging program into something um, that's that's great and that people can really take and run with and, and apply for. I agree with that, yes. I talk a lot. Sorry. <laughs> I agree with all of it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, good. Well, uh, if you'd like to um, participate at any time, um, just feel free to send me an email. I'm sure some contact information is around here. Or uh, on the question, I'd like to participate. I believe you have the answer available that has the information on how to get started participating. And Jason, you can also go to, um, so the, the main chaos website is chaos.community. And so the, uh, if you go to that website, you'll see all about all of the metrics that chaos works on. And uh, under yes. the top nav bar, it's, there's a little participate chaos.community slash participate. And that shows you, because we have open meetings all the time. Um, it has, you can find where all the GitHub repos are for all of the metrics and all of the working groups. Um, the diversity and inclusion working group specifically is the one that um, does touch, obviously does touch on the, the DNI badging. So take mm -hmm. a look at that. We're always glad to give updates in the middle of um, the working group meeting for diversity and inclusion. Um, and I think we do that almost every week now because we've just got so much going on. Someone says they're doing a badging project at GNOME. Um, would you like to get in touch and talk a little more about that on email? Or, because um, there isn't much of a chat here, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to learn more about that. I'm going to send you a, a, a quick message about that. Oh, you missed some of the stuff. That's okay. Well, it seems like you um, you got the the interesting parts of it if you're interested. Uh, okay. Hey, Matt, um, do you mind if I yes. talk a little bit more about like why it would be important to show that badge on your project or your event? Yeah. Uh, and you can. Yeah, I you think can, I, I've been so. Sorry. No, no, I was just going to say you can completely jump in if I uh, get anything wrong because I'm still pretty new to this project. I'm only like three weeks in. So <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I think I've been doing work you know, with badging projects since I started working with chaos. So it's just, it's, I'm so into it that I always forget that some people don't, 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 aren't, aren't very into it, you know? So go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, um, so I think it's important to signal to potential contributors or attendees or whoever you're trying to reach, um, users even that, uh, you know, kind of like what the values around the project are. So like if, if you can display this, this little sign that says, hey, d diversity and inclusion is very important to us, um, that we, we track everything, we look at everything, we care about this stuff. And we've gone through this long application process, not long, but um, pretty intensive, you know, like we, it's not just like you fill out a form and you get a badge. Like there are humans that review this stuff and they, um, you know, the requirements are pretty strict you know, that you uh, really do, like we, we look at everything and make sure that you really do, uh, can demonstrate your, your commitment to diversity and inclusion. So it's not just like an automated thing, automated thing. Um, and so I think that that really signifies to, to as I said before, to potential um, contributors or users that, you know, this is something you care about. And if, it care, if they care about it too, then I think that's a really good way to show that, uh, 
that this might be a good fit. You know, people are looking for projects all the time to contribute to. Um, and I think that that can, can kind of uh, enhance your attractiveness if you're trying to recruit people to come participate in your project or come to be a part of your event. Like that's just a little uh, signal that can, can really show that you care about this stuff. So that's why I think it's important. Well, thank you for that. Um, I, I think I started out thinking um, you have a badge because people look at it and say, um, well, that project has a bunch of badges, you know? Like I'd see a project with a bunch of badges and I'd say they're, they're certified for everything, but I think it really matters like um, that, you, that you care about the badges that you're getting and that you um, put the work and time to get the ones that matter to you. Um, so I think, and we're always, uh, we're, we're looking to take candidates in like the next few months. So I'm always excited to hear about if people are interested in getting their pro project or event badge as well. Uh, someone question. said the DNI team is really doing awesome work with this project. Well done. Well, thank you. Uh, that might be someone that works on our project, but <laughs> thank you very much for uh, for providing that that um, positivity. Oh. And our, both of our mentees are here, which is nice to see. Um, I, I appreciate you both, Asa and Tola. Uh, I may be um, telling everybody that you're here, but I, I think we all really appreciate that you are here. Someone says, have you had any concerns from a social perspective? I apologize. Um, I, could you elaborate on your question just a bit? I also look and I see so many people here that I have, um, oh, there we go. Um, sometimes when people get upgraded, it could be used as gatekeeping. Ooh, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a good point. Um, so let me think about that one for a second and get right back to you. So I, I think what you mean, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that like when a project gets a certain badge or something, then they, then they can kind of use that and say, kind of like, we've got this badge. Yeah, human relationships are definitely complex. That's what they just said. And um, when you have, uh, um, I understand what you mean by gatekeeping, I think, uh, where there's um, a project that has a lot of um, very high level badging and they've kind of like, works their way to get that by just measuring the metrics. Um, I think a lot of this, there's some subjectivity in getting the badge as far as to make sure that you're genuinely um, interested in measuring these metrics. Um, and that when you, um, if you have a gold badge, that's going to be really important to us that you are, um, that you have DNI as a priority in your project or event. Um, and I, I understand that there's some, like, especially some self-report programs that where you, where the system can be uh, not necessarily gamed, but if you self-report and you're wrong and you get the best badge and then you um, come back and it's not right, um, then there's there's got to be checks and balances in place for that as well, um, which is something we're also working on in the workflow process. I appreciate that we had so many inquiries as well. So if there's anything anyone wants to say too, it doesn't have to be a question. Um, comments uh, and advice are always welcome as well because this is a newer project.
And I can say newer person, this has been very interesting to watch the evolution of it. Um, and it's really exciting. You know, I'm, I'm really glad to kind of watch from the sidelines and, and, um, and see the progress that's being made. It's really a great time to join if you're looking for something to work on that. And if you care about this stuff too, I think it's a really good time. Uh, we got another inquiry saying that it means that standards, standards of behavior uh, need to be upgraded, e.g. with great influence comes greater responsibility. Um, I think that using the chaos metrics was a big step towards like making sure that we have the right uh, ideas in place. Um, that we have the, that w the metrics we're asking people to measure are solid and established metrics. Uh, and we've been um, working on it, even improving them from that um, as we go, because we found some, like I said, kinks in the hose that I said in the, pr the presentation itself. Um, we have a lot of things that we have difficulty with with the metrics themselves, and then we make a pull request. It gets, um, you know, we kind of meet in the middle, and um, it becomes a, a change metric. Someone says, Jonah Bacon just recently published some good content about making an award badging system that degrades over time to reduce power distance. What might your opinion be? Um, yeah, we don't have a, we don't have any, like we have a, um, a degradation system of which um, uh, after we're thinking a certain amount of time that the badge, um, I can't say what time yet because we haven't solidified that yet, but we have a certain period of time which, with which you have to renew your badge uh, kind of use it or lose it, uh, as far as, um, or renew or to lose it is a better way to put it. Uh, and I, I appreciate all the literature I can get when it comes to badging, uh, because just like, just like everything in software development, it's not as old as a lot of other, a lot of other, um, systems for things like this. So, um, I'd like to know a little more about the, uh, that, published content, so I'll have to look at that after this presentation. The ones, the badging system we were working most closely with was um, CII, or Core Infrastructure Initiative. We actually have their, um, their, their badging program integrated into one of our front ends, which is Augur. Uh, that we display metrics with. So there's, we can look at a project and say, is it CII badged and what level, uh, what percentage and things like that, that you can measure um, certain things about the project and get, a, and get a high level overview of how the project is doing as far as core infrastructure initiative best practices. Uh, so that is kind of a, was, was, a, was a big inspiration for us um, in starting the badging program. Uh, and also just wanting to have a way to, to um, to foster good DNI practices and to thank the people in the groups and the um, the subgroups that put together these um, these processes that foster good DNI practices in open source. That's a little long winded, but it's how it goes in my head. <laughs> When can we start to have badges? That is a good question. Um, so as we're working on the review system, um, well, the review review right now in which we take um, temp reviewers and we're working on uh, making the bots better and making the review system documentation better and uh, improving the review system before we make it live. But we're planning to, planning to start putting out badges uh, as soon as we have our, uh, our review system in check, uh, our documentation in check. Um, and we have some hopes to improve our documentation over the next um, seasons. Um, that I'm, I'm not trying to hint at season of docs, but that's what's coming up in my head. <laughs> but uh, we're trying to work on our documentation as soon as we start putting out 
uh, at a refined level as soon as we start putting out badges because we have the documentation we need, but we also have some documentation we want uh, so to make it easier for people to use. So we're looking at the short answer. We're looking at probably the end of August, a little bit after that maybe, um, but around that time frame. I have to I have to keep myself from sharing all the um, so um, I have to keep myself from sharing all the documentation on both internationalization and the workflow process that we've been working on with uh, our summer of code and outreach and mentors mentees uh, but that's um, very important to me and I I, I want to show all the latest developments and uh, but it's still under development and that's what development's about so I have to I have to wait on that until <laughs> until we start taking more more badges. Looks like the uh, the questions started to slow down. So I, I'd like to I'd like to encourage people to um, ask the questions they have, and I'm really excited to hear what people have to say as well. Sorry, Elizabeth, you were uh, were you saying something as well? I was just going to say the same thing. <laughs> so <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I, uh, I think with the 15 minute presentation, even though we had a lot of questions, it looks like um, it looks like it might be toward the end of the session here. Uh, I'm going to do, do you think it's time for a last call for questions? That sounds good. Okay. Just if you have anything else to say at the end here. Okay. Um, if we have nothing else, I think that is the end of the session. Uh, I really appreciate this is um, this is a great opportunity to speak here at the Open Source Summit North America specifically. Um, I really appreciate everybody that came, and I appreciate Elizabeth for showing up and helping out. Um, yeah, I just appreciate you all. We appreciate you too, Matt. Okay, I think that's it then.